So what period are these from, typically? Did you compile these? Are this like multiple hallways in one? Most of these are Indian. Why, why are some of the skulls facing the viewer and some of the skulls are shown with their back to the viewer? How tall is it? It's more than six feet tall. And did these people, any of them, volunteer to be part of this? Ich glaube, wäre ich jetzt ein Schädel von, von denen am Foto, das würde mich persönlich nicht stören. Aber das müsste jeder für sich alleine entscheiden. Das heißt, man müsste jetzt hunderte Personen, die Bewilligungen von hunderten Personen haben. Mich persönlich würde es nicht stören. First of all, I want to, to say very quickly that I think it was okay to, to take this picture, even if it was not, uh, even if, if you didn't ask, ask the descendants of those individuals presented there, if you should do so. Why do I say this? Because I think that, uh, think that data protection is important, yes, but I ask myself, what about data of people who have passed away? Um, our position at Te is, is for our national museum, so it's for our, our, our own museum. So we, our practice is not to um, display photographs of um, deceased people um, without the permission um, of those communities of origin. And we do not wish to um, display um, photographs of Māori and Māori ancestral remains. And so what we, it's a particular position that we take and we're trying to encourage other museums around New Zealand to um, support that position as well. So it's a journey for us. If some people would have a problem with seeing skulls, then they shouldn't go to the exhibition. That's what I think. And if they have a moral problem with photographs being taken of skulls, uh, you know, especially today, and everyone gets offended so easily. So if you don't do things that could offend anyone, you cannot do anything. So for me, it's just a few people get offended, yeah, then just don't go there. It uh, can be very valuable and inspiring for many other people. And taking this experience away from them because you think it's, it, it, it hurts your morals, it's not a good thing and, yeah, I would defend the curiosity aspect there. I think this photo could be exhibited anyway. I don't see any problematic thing with it or topic with it. I um, would recommend it because I know from the guiding tours in our museum that people are astound to see collections. So it doesn't matter now if it's a bird collection uh, like this, but also the skull collections. In the context in the Natural History Museum, seeing a collection and the amount, the amazing amount of collected things together in one place is always very astonishing. My reaction looking at these is, it's almost a fetish and masquerading as scientific study, as many fetishes do, because then there's no need to have had them displayed and there was no need to put them on shelves and categorise them obsessively. Wow, is it... Um... Oh, es sieht aus wie ein KZ, wie so ein, wie so ein, wie so ein Konzentrationslager. Ich habe es jetzt auch noch gesehen, Auschwitz. Das ist die, die Ergebnisse. Das ist das Ergebnis von, von, von diesen ganzen Foltermethoden, die hier damals stattgefunden haben und wo, wo man die Menschen ähm, so gehortet haben wie, wie in Hühnerstall. Ne? Es ist wie ein Hühnerstall hier. Aber da, ich habe das Bild von... Äh, von Leiden. Das ist ein Bild von mir, 
was hier steht, irgendwo. Es ist sehr traurig. Ich finde das sehr traurig. So, so was zu sehen ist, ich weiß auch nicht, es ist äh, traurig, traurige Geschichte. Es ist traurige Geschichte. Das sind Menschen, die kamen von überall, ähm, darunter auch meine Landsleute, auch darunter. Und das ist sehr, sehr, sehr traurig. When I looked at that uh, image, I, I was just torn by it, about the subject of it, about this long history of grave looting, and about the ongoing exploitation of the dead. Should people see this image of all these skulls? I don't know. I've been to uh, Theresienstadt in Auschwitz. And I have images of all the shoes and all the suitcases and all the hair. And that tells me only a fraction of the story. And the skulls don't tell me the story of the people's lives. Don't tell me their love. Don't tell me their scientific curiosity or their relationships over many years with real people. It captures an image, but it doesn't capture the people. And it feels like aspects of human remains on display for show and tell. And that's not how I want human beings to be remembered. That's a powerful image. If it's displayed, I think that people should be warned about what is ahead and they could have the option of looking at that or not. I think it should be a choice because there might be people who don't feel very comfortable about looking at it. But I think also that it should be a choice for everybody in, this, in our society to see or not to see news with lots of people being murdered or people starving because I think this is much more shocking and ethically complicated than exposing human remains that are carefully treated and care, cared of and displayed in a very respectful way. I find it horrifying. I find this photograph, not the photograph itself, I think the photograph is a very powerful witness to an absolutely horrifying phenomenon that on the one hand claims to respect human remains by using them for scientific study and on the other hand does not accord human remains with any of the physical treatment commonly accorded the dead out of respect. They are not covered. They're simply heaped up. I mean, this is, this is just a charnel house. My feeling is that it is so powerful and so repulsive that it could possibly generate support for ending these types of displays. And if that is a possible outcome, I would probably say it's okay to do so, but I have to say that, again, feeling that something is fundamentally wrong with it as well. On the one hand, for the study of medicine, if somebody is studying to be a doctor, they need to have access to that data to be able to understand what a, what a skull looks like, where a brain might sit, where the eyes and the parts of the body function. If it is uh, a display for a coffee table book, I, I don't think that's necessary and would not be honored by Jewish tradition. And I would see that as the hierarchy. Is the access to this information to be used to preserve life. 
Yes, I think it is ethical to display the photograph in an exhibition, particularly where the exhibition is intended to provoke discussion about ethics. I think that photographs have uh, an indexical reality, have, have this sort of direct link between the image and the thing that the image portrays. And the fact that there's such a, an incredibly clear, sharp color image contributes to that. Um es mit uh, Susan Sontag zu sagen, es wird die Realität noch realistischer oder noch mehr zur Realität durch die Transformation über eine Fotografie. Sehr traurig. Aber es ist gut zu sehen. Es ist auch gut zu sehen. Ja. Why is it good to see? Weil das ist ein Beweis. Nicht irgendwie, dass ich sage, das ist keine Anonymität mehr. Das ist ein Beweis zu sehen. Guck mal hier, was die, was die Deutschen oder was weiß ich, wie, was, was sie gemacht haben. Man sieht das. Es ist nicht versteckt. Man muss das nicht verstecken, man muss das sehen. Das ist, das ist wie, ein, wie zum Beispiel wie ein Auschwitz oder äh, habe ich auch solche Sachen gesehen. Und, das ist, und da war wir Student, ich war in Polen als Student. Und das war für uns, war ein, ein, wir waren schockiert. Wir waren schockiert. Und für mich hier ist es ein Schock. Und ich sehe diese Menschen als Menschen. Ich sehe die als Menschen, die da einfach keine Chance haben, da rauszukommen. Das, die haben keine Chance, da rauszukommen. Das ist wie, wie Konzentrationslager. Und das ist, es ist eigentlich sehr, sehr traurig, diese Sachen zu sehen. Aber man muss das sehen. Das ist sehr wichtig. I would never think of opening the actual corridor to a public exhibition. But I think if this photograph provokes the kind of questioning that I hope it will in the museum profession, then it's certainly important to exhibit. It will be controversial. Many cultures believe that even photographs of human remains are problematic for a whole variety of reasons. But it's very, very powerful because it's such a huge collection displayed in this way and it's bound to generate very strong discussion at all levels, uh, at the academic level, at the professional level of museums, at the scientific level, and, at, and amongst the public. And I think that's really, really important. Imagination is such an important thing. It is fundamental to our being. And imagination has created nations, it's created eugenics, it's created banknotes and financial borrowing and political parties. And imagination has also created art. And so art is very, very fun fundamental to human beings. It's the way that we make sense of the world around us. Uh, it has been said that artists see ghosts in order to help other people to see ghosts. And certainly by demonstrating and looking at these, you are helping us, you are helping people to see ghosts. I rather suspect that exhibiting these at Edinburgh School of Art is possibly the right place to do it because this is too painful for museums to display. Yeah. Thank you. Vielen Dank, ja. Boah. I'm sorry that it's uh, this interview. Boah.